Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I wanted to share this little unboxing with you guys. So as some of you may know from a previous uh, video, I purchased this. And yes, this is a pocket clip, a titanium pocket clip. Um, it didn't fit what I intended it to you know, purchase it for. So I decided to just go ahead and complete a build that um, I've always kind of drooled over and it's actually going to be for this guy right here. I got this guy off DLT Trading. Um, it's still available. It's a sprint run, CPM S90V, all blacked out, everything, hardware, clip, blade, liners, and a teal or Tiffany blue G10 handles, which is one of my favorite colors. Um, it gets ratty really easily, but that's just because, well, I you know, use my knives. So this package over here is actually coming from the same person who created this and it's RG Custom. So I think it's Rips, Rick's, Rick's Garage Tech. And he makes uh, a bunch of really cool custom stuff. So let's get into this right here. see what this paperwork is. I don't know if it's anything important. This is a lot of paper. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, okay, uh, that looks like it's just instructions of how to disassemble the PM2, but um, I've done it a couple times already before, so it's really not that bad. Let's take a look at these full tie scales. Damn, these things are nice. Ooh, ah, uh huh, uh huh. So this is, of course, for a right-handed individual. But look at all those milling lines. It's actually pretty cool. Some might think that, you know, it's very unfinished looking, but it's on the inside of the knife. It's not that big of a deal. I wouldn't expect for any um, excessive work to have been done to the inside of this, but um, I actually think that that's a pretty cool look. Um, let me know if you guys have ever seen scales where like it has something like this, but on the outside, because I think that's a pretty cool look. I think that... Um, milling technique is called jeweling or something like that I, i've seen like these like swirly marks before and it, um it's usually on like really high-end knives um typically like customs ultra customs and shit like that cool cool i like how they have you know a little birthday to them so yeah take these guys set them aside it's gonna look so freaking sweet Let's take this thing apart. I have a Weeha set over here. And let's see, Pivot is a T10, I believe. Let's just get that out. And do -do -do. Yeah, these things were very, very heavily Loctited. By myself because I tend to overdo it on Loctite that's just that's just me so yeah it's pretty pretty gross in there so we're done with that just keep, keep it out this is the T8 I can tell which bits I use the most because they're the ones that are the darkest like this T8 is significantly darker than all the other ones some of them are uh, have gone completely untouched which is you know, funny. Um, if you guys know of any company that actually does like really high quality um, bits for taking apart knives, let me know because I'm kind of tired of having to purchase whole sets to only really need just the bits themselves. I literally just need two bits, uh, maybe three. So, you know, common ones, T10, T8, T6, anything smaller than that i don't think i've ever really interacted with before um 
so yeah just just sit tight watch me fumble around with this shit if you like if you would like but um yeah i uh while i haven't done and i'm not really planning to do a review video even you know my own personal thoughts on this knife it was uh it was love at first flick it is definitely one of the largest knives in my collection now and it's probably going to be the one that's uh, the least used because i just I, i've always preferred smaller knives or medium to small knives and the pm2 is a full full size knife for sure and it's just uh yeah that's just that's just what it is so it's definitely a full size knife and the only reason why i went ahead and purchased these rather pricey custom scales it's because it just looks so damn good and i mean can you can you blame me there's a blade there's the washers let's try to take this apart not too bad and it's do -do. off camera real quick cool cool the barrel spacer i am planning to get a um, lanyard hole plug from Metin Boss uh, through his Etsy page. I just got to save up a little bit. It really is just like a just like a flex. That that's all it is to to get a uh, of the lanyard hole plug uh, made out of you know a premium material. It really is just a flex, and this is just another one of you know of me personally this is a flex knife for me just to be like oh look i got this you know full u.s made heavily milled titanium and polished and everything it's just really nice sorry i'm over here looking for a, a light duty disassembly of course i'm not taking giant freaking wrenches to my knives especially if they have like really dark coatings on them because i don't want to mess that up so usually they just need a little little bit of um, a force put on them to take them apart so this out of here that should just come right out what is holding it in there nothing oh maybe the you know gallon of loctite that i put on each freaking screw so there's that and as you can see these things are very very ratty you could see the uh where the clip goes but g10 is super easy to clean literally all you need is just a light duty kitchen sponge some dawn dish soap and for um like for any kind of like prep work before you start to like give it some elbow grease uh, it's a good idea to boil them for a little bit yeah i've never run into issues with like the uh scales melting or anything i've had it to where like it's like crazy crazy like boiling this goes over here no that does not go there this goes over here. Yes, yes. Should I put the clip on already? Sure. Why not? Oh, that's not it. No. This. This is the clip. And yes, the lines do match up and it looks beautiful. Cool, cool. Let me line it up. Um, I do also plan to pick up some, uh, tight, uh, full titanium hardware set, but I'd prefer to have a, uh, you know, anodized black just to keep the, just to keep the look. It's really all I'm going for here. So I wanted the, like, chrome titanium high polish and then just like with the, just dramatic contrast of the black. I think it's a pretty cool look personally. 
you know, to each their own. But yeah, this is this is a dream build for me in the making, way before I even uh, owned my first Spyderco knife. I saw the PM2 and I saw it with like titanium scales from like a custom maker, and I was just like, what? on earth is that and what do i have to do to be able to afford it one day and uh oh look at that all it took was just having to work a shit ton of hours of overtime so cool cool that's gorgeous nice nice okay slap the rest of this thing together um the the plug that I was looking at from Met and Boss, it's actually a finish that I've never seen before. It's called a uh, crystal mokutai or no, or I can't remember exactly what it was. It was a, you know, form of premium material, but it looked like a cube of like shattered metal. And he has a blue anodized one and then a raw one. You know like a silver one and uh, the silver one is, is the one that i'm planning to get but it's like 65 bucks just for the plug and i'm just kind of like eh, maybe not at this very moment so oh that one has it over there already um later on in the future i'll actually like do a detailed cleanup of this knife but um, i'm sure you guys have seen this taken apart a bajillion times before so what i'm doing here is really nothing special honestly so everybody has their own way of uh reassembling their own knives and my way is just the janky way so and there's that oh okay out. Am I putting it on the right side? I can't even see. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the right side. It's a D-shaped pivot, which is always nice. That in its own should be a industry standard for all knives, premium or high-end, uh, I mean, you know, premium or budget for the, uh, for the pivot to be, you know, a captured pivot. I don't really think it takes a whole lot more uh, machining effort to have that done. But what do I know? Not much, actually. Well, you know what? I'm actually going to have to take that off for a second. Just to... Uh... What am I doing? Oh, let's just get this on over here. My bit driver. Let me get that T10 in here. There it is. Nope, that's not it. Um, if I didn't mention it before, the price of these scales, uh, which I don't believe I did, I think I just jumped right into it, but yeah these things aren't exactly cheap the scales actually cost me more than the knife itself so the knife was 175 it came out to like 200 bucks after shipping and taxes and all that which isn't unreasonable at all you know after owning this for a little bit now i could you know very comfortably justify that um, it is a pretty good quality knife for sure and uh, i've Learn to love Spider Co. and their odd aesthetic, but they have undeniable ergonomic qualities for sure. Um, the scales are actually what's it called? It was two twelve, two twelve, two fifteen. Um, after everything was said and done, taxes and shipping. Um, so they're not cheap, but again, they're essentially custom made and you know here in the US they have, They're not just like pressed and stamped and you know, there's a bajillion of them sitting in a warehouse I did have to wait for these things to be 
actually you know made so there is you know there's value to all these things for sure and to each their own like this this what i'm doing is not adding any sort of um advantage really useful advantage why isn't this oh it's just a little a little more snug than i think it would be there it is yeah that's all the freaking loctite but it's gonna take me forever to actually you know remove all that loctite properly i'd probably have to like just throw all of this in a pot of boiling water just to loosen it all okay okay cool cool where is the important part the actual freaking blade throw this back on there yep yep okay okay that goes there this goes here this goes right over should come together quite seamlessly except for this back piece just fucking squeeze the shit out of it there you go get the rest of these bits in here <laughs> Again, there's there's just so much leftover Loctite on these things. It's it's ridiculous, but hey, at least that means I don't have to put more. flush nice nice the last one right here the pivot where is it I don't feel it um, yeah these these skills are they're tight for sure. There's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. Yeah, let me do this off camera real quick. Hmm. Everything's lining up. Like it's all nice and beautiful for sure. Just gotta back out a couple of them. It's kind of a dummy part on my end because when you're taking something apart and putting it back together it's not exactly the best idea to screw down completely other parts um just to do it all all together i mean you can't screw things all down simultaneously but you know a little bit at a time there it is nice all right so yeah the pivot's finally in there and i'll adjust for the action in a second damn this thing's freaking beautiful like i can't believe i actually freaking own this this is this is awesome so and it's actually gonna be you know a user I'm gonna take it out and use it for stupid shit um you know stuff that you're supposed to be using a knife for but i'm not gonna go and try to cut bricks in half and just toss this around and this is definitely not a knife that i'm going to be letting people casually borrow at work for sure okay definitely gotta tighten that Despite it being so loose in the pivot, it's actually still pretty centered. Uh, so that's that's impressive. Someone had mentioned to me that uh, it shouldn't be so drop shutty, and that there's definitely some play in there. And oh, okay, uh, what's going on? 
a gap in there, a gap that wasn't there before. I wonder what it could be. Let me just crank down there. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, too much, too much. A little bit there, a little bit there. Okay, tighten it again. A little bit there. A little bit right there, and that's definitely a lot better. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's lock stick now. Ooh, that lock stick is awful. Loosen up a little bit there, loosen up a little bit right there. All right, well, I'll mess with this thing off camera, but as you guys can see, this thing is glorious. And as titanium goes and Starburst milling, um, yeah, this is beautiful, it really is. Check out that clip. That is just sexy. This knife sells sex, basically. So don't worry about that uh, super tingy drop shittiness. I'm gonna try to tune it up off camera and after all this and try to work out that, that lock stick because that is, that is awful right there. You guys can hear that? Like, yeah, that's, that's no bueno. I might have to actually take this thing apart. But for the sake of this video not being an hour long, um, there you guys go. This thing feels freaking sweet. Um, let me pull out my other Spyderco with the titanium scales just to show you guys. So I want to do this with this. So this is the Native 5 Starburst milled titanium. And yeah, I mean, they're in different direction, but when I saw the, you know, high polished titanium with, uh, with blackout and everything else, I just thought it was freaking, freaking sweet. Um, still the all silver look is pretty cool too, but yeah, there's, there's that. So cool. This is, this is awesome. This made me, this made my day for sure. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will be linking his information down below his Instagram and just any other little information I could find. Um, I will say that looking over this thing, how it feels, how I was able to reassemble my knife relatively easily with a giant freaking tripod in front of me. Um, it's quality. It really is quality. And uh, I've um, conversed with this individual uh, on a couple occasions and he seems like a real genuine guy. And I will be mo most definitely giving him my business in the future for sure for other projects. So again, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.